All right, up to this point, we have covered many various aspects of our 12 lead EKG. The final aspect that we need to take a look at, and really arguably the most important part, is evaluating for ischemia and infarction. This will be divided up into the last few lessons that we have here in this series, starting with this lesson where we're going to take a quick look at our ST segment and our T wave. All right, I welcome you guys back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Watson, and my goal with this channel here is to try to give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by taking these complex critical care subjects and making them easy to understand. I truly hope that I'm able to do just that. If I am, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel below. Uh, make sure you hit that bell icon, though, that way you never miss out when I release a new lesson. Now also, if you do enjoy these lessons and you'd be interested in getting CE credits for following along with them, um, then head on over to icuadvantage.com forward slash academy and join the ICU Advantage Academy where you can watch all these videos. You'll have access to all the notes, including the new notes that I'm currently working on updating, as well as audio-only versions of these lessons. And most importantly, you'll be able to actually earn CE credits for participating in this education. So I've got some great deals going on over there, so make sure and check that out. Now, if you would like to support the channel but really don't have a need for the CEs, or if you just want access to things like the notes, then you might also want to take a look at either the YouTube or Patreon memberships. Again, links to both of those. All that stuff is going to be down in the description below. So both the ST segment and T wave are going to be important in our evaluation of possible ischemia and infarction on our 12 lead EKG. Of all the different parts of the EKG, these two areas may be the most important for you to have a good understanding of. For example, if we have ST depression with flipped T waves from normal, then this is going to be a sign of ischemia. If we note ST elevation with or without flipped T waves, then this is going to be a sign of infarction. Therefore, it really helps to make sure that you have a good foundation of understanding of these before we move further into the discussion of ischemia and infarction. So let's start off talking about our ST segment. So our ST segment really is a representation of time from when the ventricles finish depolarizing and before they start repolarizing. So if we take a look at our waveforms on EKG, we measure our ST segment starting from the end of our QRS complex. So this is at something that we call the J point. The ST segment then goes on and ends at the start of our T wave here. Now it is common for either the J point or the start of the T wave to not necessarily be perfectly defined, uh, and therefore we often have to make an approximation of these points. So real quickly, here are two examples of different J points. The first is going to be something that we call a sharp J point meaning that it's really easily identifiable. So here the transition from our QRS complex to our ST segment is going to be well defined and as such we can easily identify the J point right here. Now the second one though we refer to as a diffuse J point. With this one it's less clear exactly where the QRS ends and the ST segment begins. As you can see with this one the transition from the QRS complex to the ST segment is really a slow and sloping, uh, making it hard to really determine the exact spot at which the J point takes place. Instead, we can really kind of identify the area in which this transition occurs, which we could say would be roughly around here, but really we can't identify the exact location. Any identification more than just this area would simply be us guessing. Now we're often going to see diffuse J points with uh, things like left ventricle hypertrophy with strain pattern, pericarditis, as well as early repolarization. But we can also see diffuse J points in MIs, uh, especially when we have tombstoning present. So now, once we have our ST segment identified, what we really want to do is compare its height to that of the isoelectric baseline. Depending on where it is in relation to the baseline, that this is going to determine if we have ST elevation, or ST depression. Now the isoelectric baseline is going to be best measured from the TP segment, so the end of the T wave to the start of the P wave of the next beat. Now this may actually be difficult to see though, especially in patients with fast heart rates, 
Uh, therefore, you may need to use the PR interval or really just your best judgment if the T and P waves are really too close to have a good TP segment. But in terms of identifying whether we have ST elevation or depression present, here are some examples of three different waveforms. The first one being just a normal waveform. We don't have any ST depression or elevation here. It's right at the isoelectric line. The next one being ST elevation, which we can identify because the ST segment is above the isoelectric line. And then finally, the third one being ST depression. Uh, again, here we see our ST segment. This time it is below the isoelectric line. And so when we're trying to identify if we have ST elevation or depression present, we really want to count up the boxes between the isoelectric line and where the ST segment is. Now it is normal to have less than one millimeter of ST elevation in any of our limb leads, while in V2 and V3, uh, we can actually have uh, up to two millimeters of elevation for men older than 40 being normal. Uh, here it goes up to 2.5 millimeters if they're under 40. And then for women, up to 1.5 millimeters of elevation is considered normal as well in these leads. For the remaining precordial leads here, we're also going to expect to see less than one millimeter of ST elevation. Remember though, that with all of this, that we want to, to correlate this with the patient and how they're presenting, the morphologies that we see on EKG, their history, as well as if there's any reciprocal changes present. And it's important to remember that if any elevation is present that wasn't there on previous EKGs, or if the patient is presenting uh, in a way that matches ischemia, that any elevation really can be considered pathological. The last thing I want to review over for our ST segment in this lesson is going to be the shape of our ST segment. So there's many different shapes of the ST segments uh, in various conditions, both with elevation and depression, which may or may not indicate ischemia or infarction. So we can have flat, upsloping, and downsloping ST segments, as well as something we call concave or convex ST segments. And we can see these with both ST elevation and depression, and certain shapes are going to be more common than others, uh, and some shapes can signify specific conditions that are present. So I am going to be covering these, including uh, various potential causes of some of these in the next couple lessons, but I did want to make mention of them here. All right, now that we've talked about the ST segment, we also need to discuss the T wave a little bit more. Now we've already previously discussed this some in previous lessons, but I did just want to hit on a few points that are going to be important as we move into talking about ischemia and infarction. So there are various morphologies, but we can really group them down into three basic things. Our shape or symmetry, the size, as well as the polarity of the T wave. So to start off, let's talk about the shape or symmetry of the T wave. So when talking about the, the shape of the T wave, first we really want to evaluate something we call the, the symmetry of the T wave. Normally the T wave is going to be asymmetrical, meaning if we divide the T wave at the peak, that the two sides are not going to be equal. So here are two examples of T waves. The first one is a normal asymmetrical shape. As you can see, if I divide the wave from the peak here, the first part is actually much larger than the second part. In the second example, this is actually a symmetrical T wave. Dividing it down from the peak, we can now see that we have both halves that are basically the same size. Now, symmetrical T waves are pathological. Um, we often will see them with ischemia, electrolyte abnormalities, as well as some CNS problems. Early identification of MI can occur also with the presence of symmetrical T waves. That said, some people do actually have normal symmetrical T waves, but if we do see them, we need to rule out them being pathological before considering it normal. Now, sometimes determining the symmetry of the T wave uh, is going to be difficult due to our ST segment. So if there's elevation or depression that's present, um, you really just need to continue the line of the T wave to the isoelectric baseline, and this is often going to help to identify these. So along with the shape and symmetry, we also want to look at the size of the T waves. And here we can see things like short and tall, as well as narrow and broad T waves. So tall, narrow T waves are going to be common with things like hyperkalemia, while broad T waves can actually be present with various CNS problems. So here are a few examples of various T wave shapes, just to give you an idea of some of these. First, we've got a couple asymmetrical waves, uh, both positive and negative. 
Then we have some tall peak T waves as well as tall and broad. And then finally we have some very broad, remember think CNS here, both positive and negative T waves. Then when we're looking at the height or depth of a T wave, generally we don't expect to see the T wave more than two thirds the height or depth of the QRS complex. This we would definitely consider abnormal. And then finally with the morphology of the P wave, the last thing we want to talk about is the polarity. So repolarization of the ventricle creates its own flow of electrical activity. We can see positive, negative, as well as biphasic T waves. Normally though, we expect to see positive T waves in leads 1, 2, as well as V3 through V6. And then AVR, we expect to see negative T waves. And the rest of the leads really can be variable. Now if the T wave is in the opposite direction that we expect, this is something that we call flipped. Flip T waves can be a sign of myocardial ischemia, although we can see them with some pathologies such as hypertrophy as well as bundle branch blocks. And then we also can see something that we call biphasic T waves in any of our leads. That said, if we have biphasic T waves with the first part of the, the biphasic wave being positive, that this is often going to be normal, where if we have a biphasic T wave with the first part negative, that this is more likely to be pathological. All right, so that covers our quick review of our ST segment and our T waves. Again, we're gonna talk about more of this in the next couple lessons as we begin our discussion about ischemia and infarction. Uh, in fact, in the next lesson, we're gonna take a quick dive into various different patterns that we see that may indicate or look like an ischemia or infarction on first glance, but actually are related to other pathologies. And then finally into the following and last lesson in this series, we're gonna be taking a look at our actual ischemia and infarction, and then the ways that we identify this on the 12 lead EKG. So I hope that you guys found this information useful. If you did, please leave me a like on the video down below. It really helps YouTube know to show this video to other people out there, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading the comments that you guys leave, and I try to respond to as many people as I can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you're willing to show me and this channel is truly appreciated, so thank you guys so very much. If you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can find links to both the YouTube and Patreon membership down below. Head on over there and check out some of the perks that you guys get for doing just that. As well as check out some of the links to other nursing gear, as well as some awesome t-shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson that I release. Otherwise, in the meantime, here's a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.